Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Sausalito Yacht Club. This is the resumption of our Wednesday night speaker series. This is the first time we're having an indoor speaker in well over a year. So we will continue on with this this format. Um, before I introduce uh, Dick, I just want to make a few announcements. There'll be a special event coming up a week from today. Uh, it'll be a Frenchman who's based here in Sausalito, who will kayak solo from San Francisco Bay to Hawaii. And he will do so the end of May. And his boat will be here. His boat is called Valentine. And I've seen it out on the bay. But it, it, he'll have it here for next Wednesday mm -hmm. at 6. Uh, also, the third Wednesday in May, Ron Holland, an international yacht designer, will be presenting. He'll be zooming in from his home in Vancouver. So that's what we're having for May. Uh, and obviously we want to have people come to the club uh, and also to zoom in. So this evening uh, we have a Yacht Club member, Dick Anderson, who is well known in these parts. He is, was a crew member on Constellation, the 12 meter, that won the America's Cup in 1964. Yeah. Uh, and he is he also competed and was published in Sail Magazine for the 12 meter uh, a regatta off of Newport, Rhode Island back in 2019. So, kindly welcome to the speaker series of Saucer Yacht Club, Dick Anderson. Wow. Amazing to see you. Amazing to see you all here. I, uh, I know I'm competing with the president, so the audience may be slightly smaller than we would all like. But Can you talk a little louder? A lot of places have microphones, but... Okay. I'm doing. I'm doing my best. I believe it. Um, and shouting makes me nervous. But anyway, um, yeah. The poster says I was the skipper of Constellation in 1964, and the poster's wrong. I, I tried to correct that, and they, I don't know, they didn't pick it up. But I was actually at the other end of the pay scale. I was a grinder. Uh, this was. Uh, can you see that from that angle? Mostly. Okay. This is the part where the picture is supposed to change. It did. This is this was our crew, uh, and I'm in the upper yeah. uh, left hand corner or upper right hand corner. No, your left hand corner. Mm -hmm. I, I knew I was there somewhere. Uh, with my hair in my face, which made my mother crazy. But, um, <laughs> and I don't, Bob Bevere, who was the skipper, is in the middle row at the far right hand end in the white hat. And I was uh, grinding, which that I'm not actually grinding as the picture's taken. I'm waiting to grind because we're practicing jiving. And that's me under the boom, trying to pay attention. Mm -hmm. Which I found a useful thing to do on most racing sailboats. Um, so then I got older and went to school and so forth and so on, and then ended up in the movie business. And uh, some of the movies I made were about sailboats and sailboat racing in particular. Those are two shots from the 1977 America's Cup film, which I called The Best Defense, which of course was Ted Turner winning his. Uh, kick at the cat against all odds, beating Lowell North and Ted Hood, which nobody thought was going to happen. Then I uh, made some other movies as well. The, the, this was shooting a film called Big Boats on San Francisco Bay, aboard Kealoha with uh, that's Merlin in the background sailing past. And that was only, oh heck, 41 years ago. Maybe, no, 43 years ago. Mm -hmm. Wow. I've, I've changed since then. So, flash forward to the summer of 2019, we got word, or I got word, that it was going to be possible to pick up a charter for a 12 meter yacht that uh, could be sailed in the World Championship in Newport, Rhode Island in July of that year. And it was a very last minute deal because another party had backed out on the charter. So, I uh, ran around and found some people and found a couple of bucks and 
uh, put a crew together and entered. And that's us uh, in the late gray sails down at the far end of the mm -hmm. line. Pretty, pretty decent starting, clear air. We, ne we neglected to win, but we had a great time. And one of the best things about it was uh, we were able to raise a bunch of money for an outfit called uh, Warrior Sailing, which takes veterans of various conflicts and other kinds of armed service and, and teaches them how to sail, which in some cases becomes a, a job, in some cases it's just a lifestyle, in some cases it's just kind of therapy to not think about where you've been and what you've done. The, uh, a, a, a nice footnote to that was that we had a, a member of the crew who was a graduate of warrior sailing. And you can barely see him in this picture, but he was a, an army sergeant in the 101st Airborne who was all shot up in Afghanistan, but is completely uh, healthy now and uh, was one of the best guys on the boat. Mm -hmm. Stronger than dirt and great attitude, and we loved having him. And all, all the guys, some of the guys were guys I've known for 40 years. I, I tried to get young Tom to sail with us, my friend Tom Hutton in the, in the back corner, but he had other commitments, unfortunately. It would have been great to have him along, but some guys on the boat I've known for 50 years. Our motto is, uh, the uh, older we are, the better we get, which <laughs> might have been an exaggeration, I'm not sure. <laughs> But that's enough of that, and what what we want to do now is the, the magic of TV is show the movie which was made by Gary Jobson and company uh, on the on the 12 meter uh, regatta. The emphasis in this film is not so much who won or lost, but just just how gorgeous the damn boats are. And uh, as you'll see, lots of people have that opinion. Can, can you take a question now? Sure. I've always thought that uh, the spinnaker was, was small in comparison to the rig. Is that a fair statement? That uh, they could have it, carried more sail? It, it is because the the spinnaker on these boats. Whoa, that's a down fan. Um, as you can see, well, from that picture, it's a it's a three quarter rig. Right. Yeah. Uh, as opposed to a masthead rig. Right. And it was designed to be that way, and and the the, the rigging, all all of the rigging is designed to be three quarters, three quarter rig rather than masthead. Uh, there's a lot of taper in the top of the mast. And, uh -huh. um, if you saw that horrible film called Wind, oh the, yes, yeah. The the winning the winning uh, the winning uh, gimmick on uh, on the on the boat was the Whomper, which was a giant spinnaker flown from the masthead, which wow. was completely illegal. Yeah, <laughs> under every yeah. under every rule that ever was, but they're making a fictional movie, so there you go. Right. But the spinnakers are they're 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 short on the hoist, relatively, but they've got a lot of area. Uh, they're, they've got a lot of girth. Poles are long, mm -hmm. and uh, because of the shape of the hull and the amount of displacement, it it's hard to get these boats to go over ten knots. It, it really is. It's it's got to be honking, and you've got to have some kind of they don't surf, but some sort of surging condition to to get them up much over 11, certainly. But uh, they, it, as as the film says over and over again, they're just nuts fun to sail. They really are. And one of the things I was going to do was talk about a comparison between this experience and sailing in the current <laughs> America's Cup, which uh, this picture shows, please, please show it, shows a, that's, that's our old boat 
from 64 on the left constellation, and that's Prada, the, the Italian boat uh, that sailed just now in, uh, in New Zealand. And other than the fact that they're driven by the wind, it would be hard to compare them in any, and they float, more or less. Some of them float, some of them foil, but left to their own devices, they'll float. And it's, it's just a, it's a chalk and cheese exercise. Mm -hmm. um, the technology of, of 12 meters all had to do with, with uh, you know, fabric sail shape and rig tuning and, and so forth. And this new breed is all about science. And I'm, I'm not saying that, that it, the new America's Cup so-called AC-75 class is awful. It's just not my cup of tea. Do you ever see it going back? Or is it just I, I don't know. I, I, uh, I know a trustee of the New York Yacht Club who's talked about that sort of thing from time to time, but I, don't, I honestly don't see the, um, the people who now run America's Cup stepping back from where they are. They're, Somebody is absolutely convinced that the fact that the boat goes 40 miles an hour, which these boats do, and, and maybe more, on their foils in a breeze, is going to draw people to them in a way that boats going 8, 9, 10 knots through the water won't. And I, I, I don't get that, but that's where their thinking is, and they're investing a lot more money than they're making. and. I found it fun to watch, but from a sailing perspective, I can't imagine like being a sailor on that boat. Like, <laughs> it, 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 it just doesn't seem it, like it's attainable for the normal sailing person. It, it, no aspect of it has anything to do with normal sailing. Right. <laughs> I mean, so, you know. zero, zero. I mean, the, 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 the helmsman is like a sports car driver. Uh, there's no, no feel at all. So, pictures of, of poor old uh, Dean Barker uh, hanging onto the <laughs> wheel of the thing like it was going to throw him out of the boat. There are tons and tons of microchips making all kinds of decisions about uh, trim and very, very important attitudes of the foils. Mm -hmm. um, there's, you know, there's no sail handling. Sales never go up or down. They just, they're just there, and they get trimmed. And and the yeah. trim of the sails is not all that dramatic, although the technology of the mainsail it really is quite amazing. Does a human have to make the decisions about how that trim happens, or are they also relying on? Mr. Computer is telling them what they ought to do. Okay. And I think there's a rule that says that the computer can't actually actuate the valve that makes the thing happen and it's all it's all done hydraulically okay. there's there's nobody tailing a tailing a sheep uh, and and the, the guys that you see grinding and grinding and grinding and grinding are not trimming sails they're just storing hydraulic power against a spring basically mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that when the guy in charge of the trimming is told by the computer that he needs to do something he opens a valve or presses a button that opens a valve, and the hydraulic power makes something happen. So it's like flying by wire. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it's very much flying by wire. Uh, I'm not. I'm not sure, and maybe maybe Tom knows, but I don't think that the that the uh, rudders are mechanically connected to the to the helm, are they? Or do you know? Um, I, I don't know the answer to that. I, I, I'm guessing the answer is no. Although the feedback that Dean was receiving would suggest perhaps yes. Yeah, I, it just that just seemed like cavitation or something horrible going on. But at, at any rate, there. The other thing I dislike about racing in those boats, in match racing specifically, is that it takes tactics to a to a new low. There is some advantage in winning the start, but as we saw over and over again, the Kiwis didn't contest the starts very drastically because they knew they had the power to, to uh, pass once they 
once they got up over the starting line. They, and, they made some silly mistakes, yeah. but um, I, I would really love to see these boats fleet racing, not match racing, in open water, not in a bowling alley, such as they were sailing in in, in New Zealand, um, and racing for a different trophy. In That's, terms of displacement, a constellation was how many pounds versus product? Any, any idea? Constellation weighed about 70,000 pounds. The, the new version of the boats, the same hull form, have all gotten about five or 6,000 pounds later. Some naval architect decided that uh, adding some sail area, which they did, and taking some displacement out, which they can do without changing the shape of the keel, was made for a better boat. Are they using carbon fiber? They're using carbon in the in the sails okay. and in and some of the spars. Mm -hmm. But uh, most of most of the spars are still aluminum. Okay. Booms tend to be carbon. Spinnaker poles are carbon. Uh, it, it's it's not legal to build a a new carbon twelve. Mm -hmm. uh, because that would require a big, big change in the rules, mm -hmm. which they had to do uh, in about 1985, so Ron Holland and his friends could design the plastic boats so that Dennis could complain about cheating. <laughs> but, uh, and, there, and there hasn't been a 12-meter built. I don't, I'm, I'm sh well, there was one replica built. Uh, in Scandinavia or Germany, I think, but it's not a competitive. It's not built to to race. It just they built it because it was going to be pretty, and it's it's varnished wood, and it's just mm -hmm. a gorgeous, gorgeous boat. But there hadn't been a new boat built since 1986, mm -hmm. in order to race in Australia in '87. Mm -hmm. So, would you tell us a little about the history of Defender? Defender was built uh, for the 1983 defense uh, syndicate with the, some, some Texans and some other folks. Uh, Gary Jobson, who was the narrator of this film, was and Ted Turner's, famously Ted Turner's tactician in 77, was behind it uh, as, as sort of the organizing force. Tom Blackhaller from right here was the helmsman. Uh, Paul Kayard sailed on the boat. A bunch of people from the bay were involved. Kenny Keefe, I know. Peter Stockis was the navigator. I sailed with him for about two weeks in an advisory capacity and then had to go back to work. But it uh, was a Dave Pedrick design, and it wasn't a good boat in 1983. It, 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 it just wasn't competitive. It, in under five or six knots of breeze, it, it could hold its own, but it was a very, very tender boat. And it's still a tender boat. It was tender uh, two years ago when I sailed it. Uh, and it, it was uh, unlike the energy that went into Oh Courageous and Enterprise specifically, but also Freedom and Victory 83. It didn't get as much TLC as uh, as those boats. It was owned by the guy who owned Victory 83, very very nice guy named uh, Williams, Dennis Williams. Uh, but he always liked Victory 83 better and sort of put some guys on the boat and sailed it a bit. It was it was uh, donated to the United States Maritime Museum uh, for a tax benefit, and we chartered the boat from them, and uh, they set it up as, as quickly as they could in a, in a few minutes, but uh, it, it, it wasn't really correct, but we knew we, we, knew we weren't going to do real well, but we weren't last, so there you go. Uh, <laughs> the boat is for sale if anybody wants it. I, I will not be buying her. Um, and I won't be chartering her again. I, I think I probably won't get involved in this wonderful activity again. It's kind of the closing the circle from 55 years ago, from from the handles to the round thing. And I really quite enjoyed that experience. And, uh, 
as everybody in the movie said, it just it it's unlike everything else, and uh, those who have done it really, really, really like it. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I have a question. I talked about Ken Keefe about this at KKMI. I think it was called Pacific Telesis, the black hole or boat that had the double rudders. What was the thinking on that? The Pacific Telesis was actually the the boat that preceded. Telesis was 40, U.S. 49, which was a, a straight ahead Gary Mull conventional uh, vessel. Uh, then they just they decided that they wanted to shoot the corner of the race course, so to speak, and try something truly inventive. So Gary got in cahoots with this fellow from Stanford called Alberto Calderon, who was the father of what was called the Geek. Mm. And the Geek was this large torpedo-shaped bit of lead at the bottom of a blade in the middle of the boat with a rudder at the back and a canard rudder in the front. And the, the idea was that you could control leeway better. The, the class allows you to have two moving surfaces below the water. On all the boats you saw, those surfaces are a, a conventional rudder and a trim tab at the, at the aft end of the keel, which is used to combat weather helm as much as anything else. And although on our boat we didn't have any weather helm, but that was another story. Um, and it was, the, the, the book on Black Holler in, in Australia, in the, in the trials uh, leading up to the 87 Cup, was that they had flashes of real brilliant speed. Nobody could believe how fast they were at times, and at times they just wanted to take it out and shoot it. Mm. They, they couldn't ever create a consistent system of setting up the boat to make it go fast all the time. Uh, lots and lots of challenges involved. The boat still exists. When we were getting Defender ready, such as we were able to in the couple of days before the event, 61, the boat we're talking about, the real name of it is USA, uh, was way off in the corner of the yard. The geek was off the bottom. The rudders were out of it. The winches on Defender, the primaries, the cranking grinder winches, were off. Of, were the variants that had come off of 61. So she had no mast, no keel, no rudders, no winch package, and was just, I don't know, critters living in it or whatever. But I'm now told that somebody has, somebody else has bought her. The, the greater fool has stepped up. <laughs> and they're going to try to make it go again. She's probably had five different owners yeah. since since uh, Australia, and thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Let's move the move the canard forward. Let's move the rudder aft. Let's move the mast. I mean, it's chasing a rainbow that uh, has never, never, ever been actually corralled. Other than that, I don't know much. You know a lot. <laughs> you know a lot. Come on. Do you have a question? I was just wondering, you said a minute ago that you wish these the new boats would have race for a different trophy. What What is your wish or your fantasy for that? Well, I just they call it the Dick Anderson Trophy. Call it, call it the <laughs> inter intergalactic who cares trophy. Just, just take it away from America's Cup and put put America's Cup back in big, elegant sailboats. Because I, I think in, in terms of the attraction of Joe Sixpack, seeing, take J-boats for example. I don't think anybody can afford to, to go back to those, but I mean, they're just so majestic and, mm -hmm. and elegant. Mm -hmm. and they, they had a bit of a resurgence a couple of years ago. And, and uh, they were raced in Bermuda in 2017, and and that class has kind of fallen apart because the the object itself is ridiculously expensive. 
and then you have to maintain it. You have to paint it and grease it and polish it and whatnot. And then you have to pay 25 guys to run up and down the deck. Mm -hmm. And and I I was the only guy in the boat who in the in that regatta that didn't pay people. I just said, come on, come on, go sailing. It'll be fun. And and it was and. Uh, I, nobody ever paid me, and I wasn't uh, about to to uh, go the other way. And there was nobody else left to hire anyway. Yeah. The, the the true truth. But but nobody said, "Oh no, I don't want to do that." They said, "Sure, when do we start?" <laughs> and you know, we dinners and and good swag, as they say. Mm -hmm. But uh, it was a it was a combination reunion and regatta. And I think, people, you know, there'd be, well, let me back up. Do you know about the, the, the GP regattas? This is the... The Go, GoPro? Not GoPro. This is, the, this is Larry Ellison and Russell Coots, Oracle and, and the Oracle Cup uh, campaign. Um, Russell! Where have you been? Sure. You missed the whole show. Oh no. Yeah, you did. <laughs> Heaven's Hi. sakes. I thought I you forgot. were of all the people who were gonna I be forgot. here. I thought it'd be you. I forgot. Oh that's right, you had a stroke. Damn. I'm sorry. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. But anyway, nice to see you. <laughs> Great to see you. There's a penalty you're gonna have to pay when you realize this. <laughs> You'll never miss no. this time. But I don't read my email, but <laughs> <laughs> so, so anyway, we're talking about the America's Cup and alternatives and the way it was and the way it is now and the way it might be. But this GP regatta, Grand Prix is I think the official name of it, oh, yeah. has taken the 50-foot catamarans that were built, one design catamarans basically, that were built uh, for the event in Bermuda in 17 and cornered the market on those. and essentially given them to teams of, of sailors from various countries. I think they're up to five or six now. And they, they have had one season in 2019, and I don't think they sailed at all in, in 2020, but they're going to come back, they say. They had, a ser they had a series on the bay, which uh, was lightly attended, as far as I could tell, but and they're they're foiling catamarans. They they go 35 miles an hour, maybe, mm -hmm. and you know, they don't have any sail handling. They're just you know, get up on the foils and go like. But they're fleet racing, which I I think is a good idea, and there's prize money, which uh, is interesting, and they're on TV and. I, Larry doesn't. I think Larry's given him five years to make money, but not that. You know, it's the lint in Larry's front pocket that is being spent on this thing. So, but it's they they could do something like that with the AC 75s, and that would be fine with me. We went out to watch them, and frankly, it's better to watch them on TV mm -hmm. because they're so fast that they're out of sight in no time at all. And when they do come within sight. They're gone, so you really don't see a whole lot. It's almost better to watch them on the tube. Well, or, yeah. And that's true. Yeah. They're they're getting really good at televising this yeah. stuff. Yeah. And oh yeah, with all that you know, Stan so Honey stuff going on, you can see I'm where sure. they are and how fast they're going. Yeah, exactly. Oh yeah, no, they're the, the technology is. I mean, I had a 16 millimeter camera. I could get on the boat once once a year. Do the best you can. Anyway, so, so, so I think to some degree, people have been solving problems that weren't necessarily long-term problems, they were short-term problems. I mean, the, the Americans Cup entered 12-meter era because people couldn't afford J-boats, and then 50 years later, people had a lot of money, so we could be back in j -boats. <laughs> But, but uh, you know, the, the 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 television of football has totally redefined the yeah. viewership. Because the viewer actually cares who's blocking and who's where, and you know, where the little yellow line is that goes across the field, and where the guy was had his hand outside the, the, the area or not. And, and I wonder if 
the America's Cup could actually have progressed differently if viewership technology made 12 meter races interesting to watch. Oh wow! I, th I think they could, and with the with the ability to put lipstick sized cameras all over the boat and and microphones and so forth, um, it it could be a, a lot more interesting than than. Uh, but it, but it, it will, it would require a more sophisticated viewer, and it would take a long time to bring those folks along, just because a lot of people wouldn't understand that moving the jib lead forward three inches is going to make an, you know, an important difference in the ability of the boat to go up when. Bob, go Bob. Yes. Did you hear the yellow line comment? Your, yeah, I did. I know. I, your one, of other, one of my other friends. Uh, your friend Stan. Yeah, Stan and uh, Mark White. They worked for a company that invented that. that right. Developed it. And the flaming hockey puck, too. Well, that didn't last very long. <laughs> At least the apple pie. <laughs> well, you know what put the, the flaming hockey puck out of business? HDTV? Yeah, probably. The, 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 the ability to. With that kind of resolution, you can actually see the little rubber disc now. Yeah. And it doesn't have to have a trail of sparks. <laughs> I like the, the trail. <laughs> yeah. How has the viewership been on YouTube during the last American Cup? I don't know. I really don't. But uh, nobody's bragging about it, so it can't have been very spectacular. Yeah. And it was, it was monetized in some strange ways. Uh, NBC, one of the NBC offshoots sold a package for 175 bucks or something like that, and then after not too long was putting it out for free, which can't have made the, made the subscribers all that uh, all that happy. But I, I mean, I just don't, I just don't see sailing as a, an entertainment opportunity. He said that having made movies about sailboat racing for a lot of years, mm -hmm. but I made them for you guys, for people in yacht clubs who do it, mm -hmm. and I and I tried really hard not to talk down to people. Uh, I didn't try to explain sailing because I knew I was preaching to people who had a, a fundamental idea. Um, and my costs weren't that great, and my audience was known, and I was able to, you know, I'd send a 16 millimeter print to Sausalito Yacht Club, and for 125 bucks, and they'd have pizza night, and put it on a 16 millimeter projector, and blah 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 blah, blah through it, and uh, they'd make some money, and sometimes I'd get the film back with no scratches, and that made me happy, but. And then home video was again a very, very sort of uh, narrow cast proposition. But mm -hmm. trying to do it on a, on a, you know, paying the bills for the TV that went on in, a, in the America's Cup this time, astronomical. Mm -hmm. you know, three helicopters on shifts because you got a, you got 20 minutes of flying time, so you've got to, you've got to rotate the. The crop, and each of them's got a million dollars worth of, of video equipment on it, and uh, and it. Now you have drones. You have drones, but they're not being used as as well. The the footage in, in this was all drone shot, and it's gorgeous. People people are able to do it. And How I, fast does a drone fly? The new drones fly fast. Like thirty-five, thirty miles an hour. Okay. Plus, they can drop organs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> no, the, they drop organs. The the drones that are being used for video are really sophisticated, yeah. and and they're producing great images. And the images are are transportable to ground stations. And well, I think that uh, you know you mentioned that you can't teach. You, know, you need a more sophisticated viewer to to make the twelve meter boats interesting. And I don't know if that's a hundred percent true. If you had the same stuff that they, that they had, the video and the the yellow lines and all that stuff, it's sort of like baseball, right? People think baseball is really boring, except if you're really, really into it. There's a lot of intricacies to 
baseball, but you still have millions of fans that watch it that don't really get all of that. They just want to root for their team, they want to see them you know, do what they do and finish the race, and they want to root for somebody. All that's true, and and baseball's been around since God was a Lance Corporal, and it's it's our national sport almost. I guess NFL football would claim that now, but um, sailing is is pretty arcane. Mm -hmm. I mean, we we live on a, the best place to go sailing in the world, in mm -hmm. my view, and I've only been doing it for 70 years, so. Um, it's not the best place to go cruising, but it's the best place to just go out and tack and jive and especially race. Um, but there are lots of other places on the planet that don't have the geographic opportunity or, or the inherent interest to do that sort of thing. And and I, I don't think it's, it's buildable. I mean, look at the number of people who play golf, who turn around and watch golf on TV. Golf's a really complicated sport at, at some levels, but to listen to Maltby talk about it, you'd think it was like breathing air. <laughs> uh, but it's, uh, and car racing. Everybody's got a car, pretty much, I mean, or has had, or wants to have, or can relate to car racing in some way, shape, or form. Sa sailing is just a long, long way from that, and uh, I'm glad I'm not trying to make a living doing it on a on a big scale. Yeah. In fact, I just was talking to Mystic Seaport yesterday, and I, I'm about this close to turning over all my uh, stuff to them and let them uh, make something out of it. But I haven't decided to do that yet. So, sometime I would like to come show a movie here, though. Maybe the Turner movie. In case anybody has to I think that yeah. fine, That'd be sure. Great. By all means, uh, by all means, yeah. Any, anything else I can bore you with? <laughs> I heard, I heard that. I, I'm late to the party. Yes, you, yeah, we, uh, we've covered that. <laughs> but you probably mentioned that uh, I think the AC 75s are going to be around for a while longer. They are, they are going to be the class, they say, for the next event. The next event seems as though it's going to be in the Solent between the Isle of Wight and Southampton, the British yachting capital of the Commonwealth. So I'll give you a slight update on that, if you'd like the, the, the New York Air from inside. The, the, the Kiwis can't afford to put on a run. Well, I'm, no, I'm, sure, I'm sure that's true. So, so the problem is the, 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 the government has helped the team the last two events as effectively a venture capital investment in what it would bring to the economy if it happened. And this last time it didn't happen. <laughs> so so the Kiwis have insufficient funds to put on an event. Mm -hmm. And therefore, they've considered um, auctioning where it goes. And the, <laughs> the, Dennis the obvious highest bid is from Dubai. Um, yeah, and the Brits and the New York Yacht Club have said, we won't come. Okay. So oh. don't choose Dubai. Mm -hmm. um, the Brits have suggested that the Solent would be an extraordinary you know, return to original for the American yeah. Cup. And, and they're probably right. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, that's that's the question. And, uh, and there is also the potential that the Brits have a, a deed of gift match with the Kiwis, one on one without any other challengers, with the agreement that whoever wins, it goes to the pre-agreed uh, location for the next, uh, the next. Uh, uh, which, which uh, I've heard is, is theoretically back to New Zealand. But but the, but the reason to do this is that the New Zealanders can't afford for not. Mm -hmm. so, and so. and the, I forget the guy's name who is Ineos. Apparently has more money than all the people on the planet put together. Well, he has. I'll tell you this: uh, he has one great, actually, he has one great cycling team that races at the pro level in Europe. Ineos Grenadiers. And, right. Uh, so he must have a lot. Of no, he. I. I don't even know what he does. Isn't, isn't the source of that that he's he's the world's plastics. leading provider of online gambling? Maybe, but I think he's. They're also into plastics. Hmm. 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, a rich person. I don't, I don't, right. I don't know what he does. A rich but person's game. The, yeah. the word on the on the boating street okay. is that he's he's just going to shout for the whole thing, oh. and and the Kiwis just have to show up, and it's theoretically a deed of gift match, which means only two two teams. They have to agree on what the rules are. They have to agree on the shape of the race course. Traditionally, it's the best two out of three, but. Uh, it may may not be this time. Mm -hmm. That seems like not very much entertainment to bring a team halfway around the world, almost. But I, I mean, I, I watched most of what there was to see, and I I thought, well, this is now, and I I really I did not have a rooting interest. In, in any team. I, I know lots and lots of the human beings who are involved in the teams, the older ones anyway, and I just thought somebody's going to win and if I had a if I had a favorite it was probably Prada just because they're more stylish than than the other folks but and they put up a they put up a good fight I think. But, well Dick I have a question of all your time on Constellation because you won. We did. You won. What's the best story? What's the funniest story? What's the worst thing happened on the boat? The mast came down on the New York Yacht Club cruise. That was that was the worst thing that happened on the on the boat. That's pretty bad. Was the the titanium the first ever titanium top mast? The top the top one third of the spar was titanium and very you know titanium was you know, unobtainium in those in those yeah. days. And, People in white coats had to come and deal with it and whatnot. And it wasn't the titanium spar that broke, it was a titanium fitting at the end of the D2 that one of the diagonal shrouds that left the end of the spreader and over it went. But uh, and the, the, the best thing that happened was the day at breakfast that Eric Ritter, the, ori the captain and original helmsman and principal investor in what we called the syndicate, looked around the table and, and said, lighting a cigarette, which he always did, and almost absentmindedly, or you know, sort of as a throwaway line, said, I think I'll let Bob start the boat today, referring to Bob Bevere, then publisher of Yachting Magazine and superb sailor, who was our tactician, and who would sail our pre-war trial horse against Constellation and starts and kick its butt again and again and again and again. Um, and all of us down the deck and, and in the team anywhere knew that it was the thing to do. And the, the breakfast table went about four feet in the air, although we couldn't all cheer. It was We just looked at each other. With, and the, the, that day we went out and raced Eagle beat him to the weather mark by four, four and a half minutes, mm. which had never happened before. And uh, the fog came in and the race was, was terminated by the committee because we, we were very, very nearly taken out of the game by a Texaco oil tanker. But uh, we knew that the, the new direction had been established and we lost, we lost one race to the Eagle for the rest of the summer in the final trials we sailed into a hole, they sailed around us in a laugher, but the rest of the time we just, we smacked them. Mm -hmm. And uh, and the British were, well, they were nice people. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they really were nice people. A lot of rugby players and and, uh, and very, very good sports. And they had the best party of the whole thing. <laughs> Breakfast was served at four in the morning. Excellent. <laughs> Are they still doing around the world races like they try? Uh, it's now called the Volvo. Okay. And uh, or was it? Have we had the last Volvo? I think we've had I think the last. Volvo, Volvo might have sold that to the next sponsor. Yeah, yeah I don't. I don't know. Um, we we haven't had a non-Volvo around the world race yet, but I, I I think we've had the last Volvo version. And they've. The last two or three have been done in, in one design boats. So I think Stan was on, I 
think it was maybe BMW or something like that. Where he they, he's I don't think he's done a Volvo. Not a Volvo. It was he's done, he he's been the he was the navigator on Groupama, I think it was mm -hmm. called. With giant goddamn trimaran, huge, hundred and something foot trimaran that uh, set a new around the world record. Mm -hmm. And I've heard Stan talk about that. And and these boats are so fast that they they'll run away from the weather. You try to you, you you're sailing in one system in a whole lot of breeze, and you get out to the front of it, and you go now what? And you, then you have to figure what the next system that is that you can catch. I think Stan would be a good person to come here and have, and have a discussion. Oh no, he's he's he's, he's one of the best plus. presenters in the history of life. Mm -hmm. I would I would. Uh, he actually has spoken here, but to the Cruising Club of America. Mm -hmm. uh, anywho, right. well, thank you. The Dick. president's done, probably well, so am I. I was going to say something. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Dick, Dick, I have a, a text here which I I didn't expect um, from the president. <laughs> yes, he said, Dick, I'm sorry, I was tied up, I couldn't make your talk. I had to talk with one of his people in Congress, but he said, Dick, next time I'll be there. Signed, Joe Biden. Okay? Thank you. Bravo. What a, what a sport. What a sport he is. Joe Biden, wow. Thank you, Dick. Thank, Thank you, Dick. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dick. Thank you, Dick. Thank you. Thanks for coming, for heaven's sakes. <laughs>